Alright, what's up everybody? We're back with another edition of Everyday Poops. Hope you guys are having a good one. Today, we're going to be recapping last night's playoff basketball. Second round has officially commenced, and we got some really good games and really crazy moments yesterday, so we're going to talk about it here in today's video. Thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, do all stuff like that. I'd really appreciate it. It really upset a lot. Uh, join the membership. If you want to learn more about the membership, there's a video on my channel explaining all of it. You can go back and watch that. Click my Twitter, TikTok, stuff like that in the description down below. And uh, yeah, don't waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. So we'll start with the first game. We had Knicks versus Pacers. Second round, game one. The Knicks sneak out with a win, 121-117. to 117. Really good game. Uh, looking at like some early things to start the game, the Pacers bench has been one of the best, if not maybe potentially the best bench in the NBA this season, it really shows. You know, they come in and do great work. Uh, TJ McConnell, Obi Toppin, uh, I mean, Isaiah Jackson, Boston Manager, Ben Shepard hit a couple shots early in the first half to kind of swing the game towards the Pacers' way. And honestly, I was very surprised by how quickly, especially in the second quarter, the, pa the Knicks were playing the Pacers' game. Like, the Pacers were forcing the Knicks to kind of play their own game in terms of playing fast pace. Like, the Knicks were playing a lot faster and a lot more, you know, jacking up shots and only getting one shot as well, uh, thanks to the Pacers are, were really crashing the glass early on in the game. And, yeah, it was interesting to see how quickly the Knicks were kind of forced to play the Pacers game, thanks to TJ McConnell, Pascal Siakam, Neesmith, Nethar, all of course Tyrese, obviously, all were pushing the pace early, you know. Then the second half, the Knicks kind of got a little more comfortable in the game. Uh, Josh Hart, throughout the entirety of the game, was just absolutely amazing. Jalen Brunson, obviously, as well. Uh, we get to the fourth quarter, and yeah, the Villanova boys really took this game over. New York outscored Indiana 39-30 in the fourth quarter. Dottie DiVincenzo hit a couple threes in the fourth. He hit two big three-pointers in the fourth quarter uh, to help. In the second half, he was great. He had 21 of his, I think he had 25 points. He had 21 of his 25 in the second half. Uh, he was amazing. That second half, he was huge You know, in terms of shooting the ball, hitting threes. That was huge. Josh Hart, of course, doing his thing. Jalen Brunson, 21 points in the fourth quarter as well. Just absolutely ridiculous stuff. Getting to the free throw line, uh, getting to the mid-range. And I said it in my preview video about the second round. It was going to be harder for the Knicks to guard Brunson. Beside, the, the difference between Brunson and Dame guarding them is that Brunson likes to get into the paint more. Obviously, he's a stockier body, bigger body, gets into the paint, gets into the mid-range and stuff. Dame's more of a going to rely on threes, you know? But Jalen Brunson's more, I'm going to get to the free throw, I'm going to get to the rim. And the Pacers are one of the worst prim, um, interior defenses in the NBA. So Jalen Brunson is going to be able to get to the free throw line and score like that. And then OJ Anobi as well. OJ Anobi made like three straight great defensive possessions. He got like back-to-back -back steals. And then he had a great uh, stop on Pascal Siakam all three in a row. So that was huge as well for the Pacers. Yeah, uh, one for four from three. In the fourth quarter, the Lennox hit four. You know, that's tough. Um, yeah, they shot 10 for 17. Had four turnovers in the fourth quarter. Just just tough. You know, Tyrese didn't take a shot in the fourth. Neither did Miles Turner. He took two free throws, but he didn't take a shot. Uh, it was led by Siakam. Nem Siakam and Neesmith both had eight points. But, yeah, the Pacers didn't really execute super well. And then we have the call where the Knicks got the ball. Or the Pacers had the ball down, I want to say, one or two. And they called the illegal screen on Miles Turner, which was that a great call? I don't really know, but they challenged it, and it was an unsuccessful, unsuccessful challenge anyway. So I guess it was a foul. Just a really tough call to call at that point. And the Knicks ended up getting the win. Because um, they, I mean, they did lock up in the fourth quarter. They had a lot, they did have a lot better defense in the fourth quarter. And so the Knicks get game one victory. Jalen Brunson, 43 points, six and six. Um, I think it's the first player to have four straight 40-point games since, like, Michael Jordan. He's the fourth player ever to have four straight 40-point playoff games. He's been ridiculous. Josh Hart was the MVP in this game. I mean, 24-13-8 and eight on 9-for-13 shooting. He was absolutely spectacular in this game. Um, scoring early on in the game. Rebounding, of course. He was making plays for others. He led the team in rebounds and assists. Like, he, he, he was amazing in this game. And, then, of course, you got Dante. With 25, OG and Isaiah Hardenstein at 13. Um, not really much much impact from the Knicks bench, which could be a big thing in this series because the Pacers, of course, they have impact from their bench. Cheech McConnell at 18 points. Obi Toppin at 12 points. Ben Shepard and Isaiah Jackson each had 8 points. 
as well in this game. They all outscored. Tyrese Halliburton was the lowest scorer on the Pacers in this game. He only had six points in this one. He, had, he did have eight assists and four steals. But, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting thing. If the Knicks bench, like guys like Miles McBride and Mitchell Robinson, can start kind of, you know, playing good or playing or trying to match the Pacers bench in terms of production, you know, or pressure the Chua, who got four minutes in this game. Looks like he might get some playing time. I, I wouldn't be surprised maybe if they throw in Alec Burks for a game or two, especially with the Bogdanovich injury. If they throw Alec Burks in for a game, maybe just to get some more offense because that Pacers bench is really good. But it's going to be hard to guard Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart apparently in this series because Josh Hart has been absolutely ridiculous so far in this playoffs in general. But even in last night's game, he was just amazing. But yeah, things I want to see, I think for the Pacers, I think they have to get better. Late game execution. Late game execution was not really amazing for the Indiana Pacers. Um, of course, OG and Obi got the steals. They had a couple of turnovers late. Pascal Siakam. I think Pascal Siakam has to be more, I don't know, more used in this series, in a sense. Like, I don't know. I just didn't feel like I got as much Pascal as I feel like we should have, especially in the half court, as we should have, as the Pacers should have had, and that we should have seen. Uh, again, now he is being guarded by OG and Obi. So that, that's a really hard matchup. I'm not saying he has to score 40 on him. I'm just saying, I don't know. I feel like like him, Turner, and TJ McConnell all took 16 shots in this game. I don't feel like all three of them should be taking the same amount of shots, you know? I feel like Pascal should get a little bit more involved. So is Tyrese. You know, this is something I said before the series. I said Tyrese is going to have to have some good games. And last night, 6-2-8 and eight with four steals, 2-6 for six in the field. Um, I don't know if that's a really good game from Tyrese Halliburton. I think he has to be a lot better as well for the Knicks. Um, they can't get paced up. Like, again, the Pacers were kind of rolling in that second quarter, a little mid-third quarter, because the Knicks were starting to try to play the Pacers game. And that's how not how the Knicks play. The Knicks are more of a slowed-down, half-court, grind-you-out type of team. Yet they were playing fast, only getting one-shot opportunities, which that's another thing the Knicks have to do, get better on the offensive rebounding. They've been an amazing offensive rebounding team, but the Pacers really tried to clash, crash the glass today, even though the Knicks technically did out-rebound the Pacers. You know, it didn't really feel like that, especially on the offensive glass. I mean, they only had eight offensive rebounds to the Pacers' seven. So the Knicks have to slow down, slow down the pace. You know, don't have to jack up as much threes and stuff as the Pacers do. But this is going to be a really good series. You know, the Knicks were able to get game one at home when I thought Indiana maybe could steal it. And then we had Nuggets. Timberwolves game two, man. Wow. Uh, the Timberwolves just put on a defensive masterclass. Like, you want to teach team defense. You want to see elite defense where in this day, today's NBA, apparently people don't think defense is played as much. Go watch this game. Because holy, the Timberwolves put the Denver Nuggets offense in a straitjacket. This was absolutely insane to see. Uh, the Nuggets only scoring 80 points in a playoff game. It's just ridiculous stuff. Minnesota, 106 to 80. And hey, by the way, they did this without Rudy Gobert, who's probably going to win Defensive Player of the Year for the fourth time this year. Without Rudy Gobert, they gave the Nuggets 80 points. That is just insane stuff. You know, the team defense was there. Shout out to Na Nas Reed defensively, was amazing in this game. He was bull he was like making Nicole Jokic get shot clock violations. Like, that's amazing. Anthony Towns as well was amazing defensively. The whole team, defensively. Just on one page, on one string, absolutely locked in, frustrating the Denver Nuggets. And and then offensively, of course, they were doing the thing. Anthony Edwards, 27 points. Cat had a great game as well, 27 and 12. He was my X Factor for the Timberwolves in the series. If he can have a good series and give you some 20, 25 point games, he put up 27 last night. And then Nikhil and Nas Reed combined for 28 points and seven blocks and eight threes off the bench combined for those two. So that's big as well. And yeah, Denver, I mean, Minnesota, I mean, offensively, it didn't look like they had a crazy game. I mean, Mike Conley only had four points. Jay McDaniels, five points. Kyle Anderson, six points. Monte Morris had one shot in seven minutes. But the defense was so elite that it just didn't really matter. That second quarter, Minnesota outscored Denver 33-15 to in the second quarter. They only allowed the Nuggets to score 15 points in the second quarter. I mean, that that's insane stuff. So look at the second quarter scoring. The Nuggets shot six for 24, one for six and three. And have five turnovers in the second quarter. Like, Jamal Murray was one for seven. Jokic was one for five. Aaron Gordon was one for three. Reggie Jackson, 0 for four. Like, that that, that was just amazing stuff in that fourth quarter. You know, for Denver, they, they just were frustrated with the whistle the entirety of the night. 
and that really just affected them in that second quarter when Minnesota put them in a defensive clinic. Uh, Jamal Murray, I said it in my preview video and in game one, I said it, I said um, he looks kind of injured right now, not 100%. I don't know how much I like that for the Nuggets going the rest of the series. Last night, he shot 3 for 18, 0 for 4 from 3. He only had 8 points. He did have 13 rebounds, but not a good game for Jamal Murray. He also had the incident where he threw the, the heat pack over the towel or whatever on the court to the rest, so we'll see what happens with that. But, yeah, Jamal Murray is not healthy. Um, and it's even tougher when you're guarded by Anthony Edwards and you have to play against this Minnesota Timberwolves defense. When a lot of the Nuggets team, a lot of the Nuggets are struggling. So Jamal Murray needs to be better. Um, which is tough again, tough to say because he has an injury, but it's like if you're out there, you're healthy enough to play. So Jamal Murray needs to be a whole lot better. Uh the Nuggets in general, you know, Nicole Jokic five for thirteen. He had sixteen, sixteen, and eight. Aaron Gorin honestly was the, the guy in this game for them. He had twenty points, eight for fourteen. He had a good start to the game. But if you but the the Timberwolves will live live with Aaron Gorin taking all the shots, you know. MPJ one for seven from three, KCP 0 for two from three. The bench, besides Justin Hottie, who hit four threes, no one else really did anything for the bench for the Denver Nuggets. Um, they missed five free throws. They were nine for thirty from three. Only shot thirty four thirty five percent from the field. Uh had sixteen turnovers. Like Tim Wills again put on a defensive master class and now Minnesota goes up two oh they win both games in Denver, man. just wow. The Minnesota Tim Wills won both games in Denver. Now they're going back home. Uh, Minnesota, I mean, Rudy Gobert's gonna be back for next game, most likely. I mean, he should be back for next game. So, I mean, I don't know how much the Nuggets can get better when you have um, Colbert out there. For the Nuggets, I mean, they're, they're the reigning champs. You always respect them. And I don't think this series is not over yet. You know, if Denver can steal, if Denver can go back and take two in Minnesota, which they're going to have to do, they have to take two in Minnesota, then it's a wholly complete, completely different series. But Nicole, Nicole Jokic, Jamal Murray kind of have to establish, like, we're here. Like, I think Jokic needs to have a big game, I think, in game three. Jokic has not been good the first two games um, in terms of Nicole Jokic standards. He has not been amazing in the first two games. And I don't know. I, just, I think Nicole Jokic needs to have a big game. I'm, I'm not saying he, like, he needs to come out game three and have like a 35, maybe even 40-point game, I feel like, in game three, and establish himself and being like, okay, no, I'm the best in the world right now. Like, I think he needs to have one of those type of games in game three because right now, Jamal Murray is struggling. KCP has been struggling to shoot this playoffs. The bench isn't providing much at all. I think Jokic has to take it onto himself and be like, you know what? I'm going to come out in game three, and I'm going to show why I'm the best player in the world. I think I think the Nuggets need that type of performance. In game three, if they want a chance at this series, you know, especially with this Minnesota Timberwolves defense, like it's it's gonna be tougher for the others to get it going. I think Jokic is gonna have to put a put his put his Superman cape on, and say, guys, I got you. At least for game three, I'm not saying the entire series. I'm just saying for game three, just to because if Jokic can come out in game three and put up like a 42, 15 and seven type game, the Nuggets can win. Then I think it's gonna provide confidence for the rest of the team. Like Jamal Murray's gonna be like, oh okay. Michael Porter Jr., KCP, the bench, is going to start being like, oh, okay, you know, we got one win. Jokic did everything. We got to help out now. I think that can it could cause that type of effect for the rest of this team because I just don't know where else they're going to get it from. Like, it's insane to see that the reigning, the reigning champs, I don't know where else is going to get it from. Minnesota, man, is just on another level right now. They look like a team on a mission. Like, they are locked in right now defensively, like, they're playing, like, Jamal Crawford said that on the broadcast yesterday, he was, like, like near the end of the first half, he was saying, they're playing defense if they're down five. Like, they're playing defense like it's the last five minutes, it's a two-point game, and they were up 25. <laughs> like, they were just absolutely just locked in, zoned in on, we have to stop them on defense every single possession. And even if they do score, it's going to be the toughest bucket they're going to have to get. Like, it's just amazing. And then offensive, of course, Anthony Edwards has just been on another level. Cat having this type of game is going to be big for the future as well. So, yeah, Minnesota up 2 0. Let's see what happens in game three. Game three is going to be a huge game, obviously. But yeah, it's going to be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you like the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, do all stuff like that. I'd really appreciate it. We upset a lot. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.